Hello everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank the UN Special Rapporteur on Poverty, Professor Oliver de Schutter, for organizing this very important event and inviting me uh, to share my thoughts through this short video. In this short video message, I would like to focus on three aspects. First of all, I would like to highlight the key problems that I see in the current model of economic development. Then I will try to articulate an alternative. What do we need to do differently going forward to ensure that the development is both inclusive and sustainable and it's not leaving too many people behind. And third and finally, I will talk about some practical strategies that are needed to implement that alternative that I'm going to propose. So let us start with the fundamental problems that I see in the current economic model. There are many, but I would like to highlight four of such problems. The first one is that still the focus is on cumulative economic growth. Many countries, especially developing countries, are paying too much attention on growth and the GDP. There's nothing wrong with GDP, but the question is that there is not enough trickle down happening and we are leaving too many people behind. Inequalities, both economic and otherwise, are rising. So this model and hope that if we grow together, that is going to take care of each and everyone in society is failing us. The second difficulty that I see is that we are ignoring the planetary boundaries. The right to clean and healthy environment as well as the climate crisis. These are key considerations that any model of development at this particular point of time has to embed. And I do not see often that is happening. Rather, climate considerations or environmental considerations are an afterthought. And I think that must change. The third problem that I see is that there is not enough participation of people. Participation, which is free and meaningful and active. And for that, we need civic space. And often that civic space is missing in many countries. Fourth and the final challenge that I see is that the rules of the game of the development model, whether these are governance institutions, whether this is United Nations, or we're talking about World Bank or International Monetary Fund, IMF. These governance institutions are inherently problematic because they exclude the voices of the global south in many developing countries. They do not represent the global south. They don't represent the people on the equal terms. And these rules of the game are unfair. And that is where I see many challenges that countries face in the global south to, to realize their development aspirations in an inclusive and sustainable manner. So what do we need to do differently? What is the alternative? I believe we need a course correction. The time for tweaks is over. We need fundamental shift in how we think development, how we think the idea of going beyond GDP, how we conceive the idea of a human rights economy that has to change fundamentally. There are many aspects that are needed as part of this course correction, but I would just like to highlight one of these elements, which I try to articulate in my vision report that I presented to the Human Rights Council in September 2023. So in this vision report, I try to articulate what I call a new model of development. And I'm calling this new model of development as planet-centered participatory model of development. There are two elements of this model of development which are vital, which reflect a departure from the current model of sustainable development or even other ideas of uh, development that are there. First of all, it is not people-centered development. Rather, it is planet-centered development. And why this departure is significant? It is significant because people me included, often 
are very selfish. And that is where it is critical to adopt an ecosystem approach. We can't adopt a model of development which is merely catering to the needs of human beings. Rather, we have to adopt a model that is taking into account not only people, but also other living beings, whether these are the plants or animals. And that is where I argue that the idea, the goal of leaving no one behind should include not only human beings, but also plants and animals. Because if we leave behind plants and animals, human beings cannot survive. So this is one key element of this new model of development in my view that we need. The second key element is participation. And participation is not the same thing as consultation with people. People should have the agency, they should have the power to decide what kind of a development they want and how they should proceed. So the development decisions, policies and programs should be informed in a bottom-up manner by individuals and community members for whose benefit those development programs and policies are conceived. Now, how do we implement this model of development? And here I would like to propose four strategies for the consideration of people who are listening to this video. The first is reinforce human rights. The second is remove capacity deficits. The third is reimagine the role of business in society. And the fourth is respecting planetary limits. So in a way, we're talking about four R's here. The first R is reinforcing human rights. Now we cannot have a model of development in which we are growing and the human rights are taking a back seat. Rather, human rights, and here I mean all human rights, including the right to environment, they have to inform each and every decision that is taken to grow, that is taken to develop. That is where the issues about taxation, from trade and investment to development aid, all these decisions have to be informed by human rights principles that are agreed upon by all the states and the other stakeholders. The second R is removing capacity uh, deficits. Now, many states are struggling because they're facing debt traps. And in this particular situation, the lack of capacity is not merely financial, increasingly access to technology is also going to be a key capacity barrier that has to be removed. The third R is we have to reimagine the role of business in society because current model of businesses is often focusing on profit maximization for the shareholders only. Of course, there's a growing interest in the idea of human rights due diligence, but still the mindset is to do no harm which is a good starting point, a necessary starting point, but that should not be equated with what businesses should do in society. They should not be exploiting people or the planet. And that is where we need to reimagine the role of business in society as a force of positive good. And the fourth and the final R in my view is that we need to respect planetary limits. We cannot just keep on growing. At the same time, the idea of degrowth has to mean different things, what it means in the global north and in developed countries, and what it means in the developing world, as well as small island states. So we cannot expect the same attitude, same approach of degrowth. Otherwise, we're going to reinforce neo-colonial ideas that have been undermining the development uh, pathways of certain states. So these are some of the thoughts that I wanted to share through this video. I very much hope that this event provides a lot of stimulation as we are preparing the Pact for the Future and Summit of the Future is going to take place later this year in September 2024. Thank you very much for the opportunity and this invitation.